so you have a story to tell. But how do you tell it in a way that rivets audiences to their seats so they might even forget to look at their cell phones? Yeah, that's impossible! You might think of big action scenes. Gross. Beautiful actors. Human drama. And if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. Oh, no, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! Okay, okay. Or at least a cute dog. Lucy, what you doing there? While these elements might grab people's attention for a while, I'm sure you've seen plenty of movies that had lots of these things. He's overloading the system to create a runaway reaction. It'll create a black hole that'll swallow the Earth. But left you bored stiff. Pulling everything into the other dimension. Which suggests that there's something else. Perhaps some storytelling secret. The basis of great stories isn't a secret at all, because the engine of effective storytelling is wired into every human being. But what is this invisible force that pulls us from the beginning of the story to the end? One of the first concepts that was hammered into me as a filmmaker was this strange word, profluency. To be profluent essentially means to flow. Within stories, it means compelling forward momentum. Oh, oh my god, okay. okay just... By forward momentum, I don't mean the dramatic things that happen in a story. Hey, baby. But how those events provoke an urgent need in the viewer to see how things are going to be resolved. Okay. <laughs> so ultimately, this all important momentum comes from within your viewers. Look at you. But here's the funny thing. You, baby. While watching high stakes action is fun and exciting and sells a lot of toys and coffee mugs, we need to stay calm, please. even the most well executed dramatic events are not why we crave stories. <laughs> Spectacle and action aren't the magical forces that pull us toward the end of a story. And it's definitely not what makes a lasting impact on us. But what is it? The simplest way to gauge whether you have a story or just events is this. If there isn't any significant difference between how your story ended and how it began, it's not a story. It's a situation. Sorry. Situations are static. Stories depict significant change. Now! Put the gun down now! Get out of here! Jesus, you're gonna kill that guy! Of course, I'm a Terminator. You just can't go around killing people. Why? While the outer action of a story could be about anything. Can you learn stuff that you haven't been programmed with? So you can be... That outer goal isn't what keeps us glued to our seats. More human? We never really care about a protagonist's outer goal as much as they do. You know, people like blood sausage too. People are morons. Nice attitude. Simply because it's not happening to us. It's Stories are dramatic in proportion to how the events of the plot force the protagonist to do the most difficult thing any human being can face. Morning! Morning. You have to see the groundhog? To change something. You think it's gonna be an early spring? About themselves. I'm predicting March 21st. Something <laughs> that's been crippling them. I just thought it would be nice for us to be together as a family mm -hmm. on my birthday. Mm -hmm. To admit that you need to change something about yourself. I'll be right back. Is to admit that something isn't working. And if there's one thing we human beings hate, it's admitting we're wrong. Change is hard. It's what all great stories are about. In happy endings, the hero does the hard thing. In tragedies, they see that they need to change, but refuse, and have to live with that choice. Now that we know what it is, how do we construct a believable struggle for change in a protagonist? While ultimately everything in a story should contribute to this, I'm going to focus on what I think are four key stages, using a classic film as an example. Now, I told you I've never dealt with these Lamborghinis before, and yet you assured me that you could mm -hmm. deliver these cars within that time frame. First, a character wants something that they don't have. I'm into him for 200000 That's 1000 my friend. Three zeros. I got all my money tied up in these cars, and if I don't get my money out, I am over. I am finished. Do you understand that? It doesn't really matter what it is. Come on, come on. I need this. Come on. But it does need to connect to a universal human need that we can relate to. 75 grand. Not bad for a couple of phone calls, huh? Desire or discomfort too big for the hero to ignore pushes them and the plot 
into motion. I've been sitting in this car for more than an hour and a half. Let's have. talk. Let's talk. This is not talking. This is you going like... Yeah. Charlie, this is Lenny. Your father has died, Charlie. Charlie? Anything else? Oh, that's it. Listen, Charlie, if there's anything I can All do, right. just call... And so off they go in pursuit of the thing they think will solve their problems and make them happy. The key word here is they think they know what will make them happy. You're going to the funeral, no? Yeah. But that confidence is based on a flawed premise. From the beginning, Come on. we see what the hero does not, that a misguided belief is driving everything they do. This is usually referred to as the character flaw. He called in a report of a stolen car. Not his son took the car without permission, just stolen. Central Station, the other guy's dad's bail him out in an hour. He left me there two days. Left home, I never saw him again. I can see that you're disappointed. I got rose bushes, didn't I? I got a used car, didn't I? Changing this internal belief? Beneficiary. Right, right, beneficiary. He got $3 million, but he didn't get the rose bushes. I got the rose bushes. Is what all effective stories are really about. If there is a hell, sir, my father's in it, and he is looking up right now, and he, he is laughing his ass off. The more protagonist's behavior is controlled by this flaw, the more impossible it seems that they'll ever overcome it. How did it go? I got what I expected. Even better is a character who isn't even aware that this belief is problematic. I think you feel cheated out of your birthright by a man who had difficulty showing love. It's common to evaluate every scene by two criteria. I'm an excellent driver. But are you sure that you drive this car? Of course, only 28 miles on the odometer since I drove it a week ago last Saturday. First, does it move the plot forward? I, I always drive the car on Saturday, never drive on Monday. What is this? Who is this car? Confronting the hero with escalating challenges. He says he drives this car. Come on, come on. Reveal more about the characters. Dad lets me drive slow on the driveway. Who's your dad? Sanford Babbitt. Useful scenes. Sanford Babbitt? Do at least one of these. Cincinnati, Ohio. That's my address. Ideally both. Who is this guy? Raymond is your brother. My brother? I, I don't have a brother. But there's a third criteria that all scenes must meet. Why didn't anybody tell me I had a brother? What would you have done about it? Every scene must be about the theme. I don't know. In this case, the Charlie cannot love anyone. Does he know how much money he's been with? No, he doesn't understand the concept of money. Well, we don't have to go today. Monday, no game schedule. Just thought maybe you'd like to go to Los Angeles with me, you know, go see Fernando Valenzuela pitch. Fernando Valenzuela, not scheduled to pitch till Wednesday. Well, I'm not doing anything on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Let's go to LA. Yeah. The middle half of stories is about how the best laid plans meet setback after setback. Of course, it's definitely not my room, and I don't have my tapioca pudding, and the bed's in the wrong place. That's not, definitely not my bed. If you like it there, you can move it. They tell you today for the first time that you have a brother, and I don't see in your Let's face one little reaction. I'm not saying joy. I'm saying something. Let's take it easy. You don't know what I'm going through here. Why is he here? Raymond was left all the money, and I got nothing. How much? Three million dollars, every penny of it. So? So I'm going to keep him till I get my half. I deserve that. This pressure is strategic. You're using me. You use everybody. I'm using Raymond. Raymond! Raymond, am I using you? Am I using you, Raymond? Yeah. Shut up! He is answering a question from a half hour ago! Because it's only under incredible stress that you find out what someone is truly made of. Everybody's boarding. Let's go. Their line travel is very dangerous. But don't be silly. It's the safest travel in the world. You're going to love this. Trust me. Yeah. Now, come on. Oh, no. You and I are going to get on this fucking plane. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Failure is the pressure cooker he's okay. He's okay. of character development. We are not going to Cincinnati, and that's final. My boxer shorts at Kmart. Raymond, that is final. Did you hear me? Conversely, I'd argue that all good plots are an inevitability of character. <laughs> Plot events happen the way they do. What difference does it make? Where you buy underwear? Because of who people are. Underwear is underwear. It is underwear wherever you buy it. In Cincinnati or wherever. They just can't help doing what they do. For each action, there are consequences, which are a key element to raise the stakes and drive your story forward. You gotta pay these people back or it's all over. We're out of business. This typically culminates in a disaster that seems unrecoverable, usually around the midpoint of the story. In Rain Man, Charlie hits rock bottom Son of a bitch! when his business deal collapses. The escalation of a protagonist's problems piques our curiosity to see how they're going to solve them. A truly satisfying solution is hidden in something that's been right in front of your hero's eyes the whole time. 
only they were too blinded by their beliefs to see it. Ray, stop it. J7. Which J7? The song? The song's J7? Yeah. 18 wheels and a dozen roses. What's the number? D5. Cheating heart, Hank Williams. D1. Blue Moon in Kentucky, Bill Monroe. In a blue grass boy's D5. You seeing that, Ray? You catching that? Yeah, falling on yeah? the ground. What do I have left? Two jacks, one eight, one king, one six. Two aces, one ten, one nine, one five. You are beautiful, man. Yeah. In Rain Man, Charlie's extraordinary brother wins enough money for Charlie to pay his debts. Raymond's doctor even offers Charlie a huge sum of money. What is this? It's a very big check. Just to walk away from the brother who's been driving him crazy anyway. $250,000 and no strings attached. It looks like Charlie is getting exactly what he wanted. And this, my friends, is where things really get interesting. Just imagine if the movie ended here. Charlie surrenders his brother to the doctor and gets at least some of the money he spent the whole story chasing. <laughs> And based on how consistently selfish Charlie's behavior has been, this should seem like a real possibility. But just imagine if the movie actually ended that way. What would be the moral of that story? Kidnap your brother and get rich? It would be a deeply cynical and unsatisfying ending because we can see what Charlie cannot. All the money in the world isn't going to make him happy. When I was a kid and I got scared, the rain man would come and sing to me. You know, one of those imaginary childhood friends. What happened to him? Nothing, I just grew up. What he needs is to care about other human beings. Was I trying to say Raymond and it came out Rain Man? Yeah, fine Rain Man. You? You're the Rain Man? But feeling unloved by his own father left him sure that no one could love him. And that no one is worth loving. Who took this picture? T.A.D. We don't stay glued to our seats to see whether an exotic car dealer can close a deal. When did you leave? January 21st, 1965. Is this just after Mom died, New Year's? Yeah, yeah Mom died January 5th, 1965. And you remember uh, that day? You remember that day that you left? Short, short and sudden illness. You remember that day? Yeah. That you left? Yeah. Was I there? Where was I? Where, where, you, you, you were in the window. You, you waved to me. Bye-bye, Rain Man. Bye-bye. We stay to see whether someone can change. So you, you, you were the one that sang to me? Yeah. The very thing that's been ruining their life. What, what, what did you sing? What, what, what? Although the outer action of the story needs to be entertaining. What did you sing? What? It's the question of inner change that gives a story stakes. 17. Having realized that getting what they wanted isn't going to make them happy, the protagonist's internal values undergo a seismic shift. They finally started becoming the person they need to be. They never hurt John Pam. They never hurt John Pam. The rest of the story portrays how they pursue what they need, hampered ironically by the very success they had at getting their former want. Here you go, right where you like it, in the bed. In the end, Charlie loses his battle for the inheritance and for custody. You stole Raymond out of the institution and you're willing to trade him for one and a half million dollars, is that correct? My father died. I was upset. So last week you were upset, and then this week you've suddenly found some devotion to your brother and you want to take care of him for the rest of your life. Yes. Uh -huh. But he gained something far more valuable. Dr. Bruner really likes you a lot, and he's probably going to want to take you back with him. You know? Yeah. There's perhaps no greater challenge. But I just want you to know that what I said about being on the road with you, I meant. Than changing a belief. Connecting. We subconsciously adopted to protect ourselves. I like having you for my brother. I'm an excellent driver. From repeating terrible experiences. Yes, you are. Confronting a protagonist with the belief behind their own greatest misery gives a story the highest possible stakes. A protagonist who shows us that it's possible to change such a destructive belief isn't just the driving force behind great stories. It's the whole reason we come to stories in the first place. We want heroes to inspire our own journey. Get going. A journey I'll see you soon. to become the heroes of our own lives. I like having you for my brother.